Welcome back to the Retail Initiative Podcast. I am excited for this one. You are in for a treat. With me is my friend and sort of my business partner, Tara Austin, yep. the owner of Ruthie Grace. Tara, thanks for joining me today. Hey, Josh. Good morning. I'm super excited to be on the podcast with you today. It's actually been quite a while since I've been a guest, so I'm really excited to be here chatting with you about all the things. Yes, I <laughs> am as well. So I've been doing a series where I've been interviewing retailers, um, and this is going to be a little bit different because how I work with Tara does look different. And so first off, if you are interested in her story, you can go back a handful of episodes. We'll link it in the notes and find the episode where we do dig into her story. Um, but if you are not familiar, the super short version is Tara owns a boutique called Ruthie Grace Boutique. They are super successful online. They have an amazing storefront. They also have a men's store and online sales channel. And so, but we also own together, we own this thing called Manifest, which is a like di digital intensive, like a virtual intensive. We do a foundations course and we do this awesome event every September where we teach retailers trying to grow their online sales strategies and tactics around what that looks like. Um, so that's some context. So Tara, 2023, you know, I do, I, for people listening, I do want to get into 2024 and what you're seeing in the market and, and how they can grow. But sometimes I like to start first by looking back to kind of ex explain where are we, like what's going on in the e-commerce community. And I think, you know, I see in like Facebook groups, comments around like, we're all struggling and and how challenging it is. But I know that it's not completely true. Like there are retailers mm -hmm. that grew, Ruthie Grace being one of them, that grew in 2023. But I think that we can say that the retailers that grew, almost all of them would say that growth was harder than any other year before. 1,000%. So, so tell me, like when you look at 2023, what went into it being a challenging year for so many retailers? You know, it's such an interesting topic because um, like coming up on the end of 2023, looking ahead to 2024, <clears throat> I, I know that you've seen some of the stats that have come out of Shopify for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, like all the stats are showing like lots of major increases in e-commerce and retail sales. But yet when you kind of come down out of the clouds and stop looking at it from like a big picture view and you start having conversations with individual retailers about like how the performance has been in the last year, like you get such a wide range of responses. But despite the range, you actually hear more often than not of a lot of a lot of struggles, excuse me, it's a lot of struggles and hardship that have kind of taken place um, for these small retailers that are servicing their local communities and really trying to get that online presence and grow. So I feel like 2023 was just a really interesting year because um, it's, you know, I've been trying to put my finger on it for quite some time now. You and I being in the retail space, talking with a lot of different retailers, like we've been having conversations with people, like how's things going? What What's happening? Like give us some feedback, some data. And I feel like if I was to put like a phrase on 2023 as to what I think has happened, I think we're in a post Instagram, post COVID restabilization period. I know that's a really long phrase, but um, I think what we're encountering is for the first time in maybe close to, you know, over five years, we're starting to see this restabilization of typical retail post Instagram boom. Um, and what I would consider Instagram boom is kind of like the large influx of retailers seeing explosive overnight growth with the leveraging of curiosity and vi virility of reels and posts and influencer sharing. I think we're starting, people are coming back down off the high. And then we're also coming down off the high of COVID. Um, in the sense that like that influx of cash is no longer circulating in the economy. Um, we're seeing, um, some retail, excuse me, some inflation across the board with groceries rising. Um, you know, the market's just slowing down from what we have been used to, but a slowdown does not necessarily mean regression altogether. Um, 
It just means we're restabilizing to maybe what we would expect to see as a normalization in this time and period had we not gone through those massive booms previously. Got it. So it's it's like being hit in two different fronts. Like, yeah. on one hand, we had, and, and I think if we just to call it what it is, like we're coming out of the longest, amazing economy in American history. Like from, I forget what the year, like 2010 to 2000 and like 21. It was just like the, just looking at the stock market, massive yeah. growth every single year. I remember I was in an, at a conference and Tony Robbins was speaking and he was talking about, this was in February of 2020. And he was like, it's, it's a room of entrepreneurs, mostly in the marketing space. And he's like, look, winter is coming. Yeah. The last 10 years have almost been so good. It's fake. And you need to understand that winter is coming. And if your business is not ready for it, like you're going to be in for it. So we have the longest great economy ever. We had algorithms that were super favorable. Like you could do, just do things. You could just get busy on these platforms and see growth. And then we had this massive influx of almost like fake money being pushed yeah. into the economy while people are bored at home. All like just thing after thing after thing made it normal to see we grew 40% last year, we grew 40% this year, we grew 40% this year. And then we hit this year where it was much more challenging. And not that everyone was growing 40% year over year. So do you see any like ma massive strategic difference between like what was working in 2018, 2020, you know, up really up until 2023, do you see anything like strategic things that really shifted that made it be so hard? So to kind of give you like maybe a more real life example, the way I've kind of seen things like, let's take a weight loss journey, for example. What have we have done in the past would be would have would have what has worked in the past would be the equivalent of someone trying to lose weight and literally showing up for a few days and walking around the treadmill and losing weight, right? Like you just had to do the thing. As long as you put in the effort and put in the energy and had the elbow grease, like you could move the needle and not just move it by an inch. You could move it in big strides. Mm -hmm. But now. Metabolism. Yeah. Like your metabolism, you know, like you just like revved it up. Like, mm -hmm. um, but what I'm seeing now is you can't just show up and walk on the treadmill. Like you actually have to have a lot more strategy in place because the truth is, is you could show up and walk on the treadmill and then not lose weight. You could show up and post the pictures and show up and have the lodge and get new products in, but that didn't necessarily mean that you were going to have the sales you expected. Mm -hmm. For Ruthie Grace, the way that I really saw this come out was... um 2018, 19, and then really explosive 2020, 2021, we saw incremental increases month over month in our product launches. So for those of you that aren't familiar with my business model, we do product launches every Thursday night at 8 p.m. And then we, those are what we would call main launches. And then we have weekly mini launches that take place at the beginning of the week, typically in the morning. And they're a lot less product. They're just like little pick-me-ups kind of take place throughout the week. Um, and then we combine some promos and different campaigns here and there. But like the bread and butter of what we have always done was those Thursday night launches. And over that four-year increment, we saw substantial increase in growth in those launches. So we could do things like if I had more stock in a launch, I had more sales. If I had more products in a launch, I had more sales. If I had more social media content, I had more sales. Like all the things, if I could do all the things, I could effectively predict the launch numbers according to where it was last week, last month, at this time last year. And I could get so close to the prediction level of what the launch would do. Based on historical launch numbers, purely alone, okay? 
Well, in 2020, into 2022, I'm going to be honest, this really started into 2022, going into 2023. This has not just been the last calendar year, but the launches were so unpredictable, like completely unpredictable. And we just kept thinking, okay, what's going on here? Like, what's happening? Why is this so unpredictable? Well, we realized it's because the metrics and the strategy, which we were trying to leverage predictability, were not effective. Like, historical data alone was not the thing that was going to move the needle. And so um, we were like, okay, if we're going to get good at predicting these launches again, we actually need to have more, we need to have a better strategy in place because just hoping, like literally just hoping by like sheer, like this is what happened and I'm going to hope it's going to do better wasn't enough. Like just oh. hoping that we just, just showing up wasn't going to help us make the sales or lose the weight in the weight loss example. Is that making sense? And so we realized like we were going to have to do, we've realized like we're going to have to do things different. Like we're going to have to do things different. And we also realized that putting all the eggs in the basket of the launches was not letting us fail fast. It was failing slow because we were putting too much weight on one particular moment in time to be able to future cast the success of the business. And so we kind of started shifting the way we completely operated and strategized. Um, and that's really been a game changer for us because our launches are still not performing sales-wise at the level they were in those years, but our overall sales are up. So mm -hmm. we've had to have a complete shift of mindset in how we approach the business. Yeah, I love that. I mean, first I love that you you did what every entrepreneur needs to do, which is like you have this strategy that worked and, and it quit working like it was. And instead of like, I, I feel like what people do is two extremes. Most of the time we either are like, okay, it did work. And so it's just a fluke. However many months in a row, it's not working, but it's going to work again. And we just kind of hold to this old strategy thinking, okay, it's going to come around. Or we go to this other extreme, which is like, okay, that doesn't work onto the next thing, onto the next thing. And we throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> and really it's like in the middle. Between the two. Between the two of you don't just hold to it, but you also don't completely remove it. You start to ask better questions. A thousand percent around. Okay. Why, what about this is not working? And you know what? Maybe you go into those questions and you do come to the conclusion that you need to stick, stick with it, or you need to completely abandon it. Maybe, but it likely is not either one of those that needs to happen. But it seems like before what was working for Ruthie Grace, and I'm not, I don't want to like discredit what you did before as though it didn't have strategy. I know that it did because I've helped <laughs> teach with you and we've talked through your strategy. Yeah. There was a, and there was a degree that part of that strategy could be checking the boxes. Did we produce okay. this volume of content? Did we send this volume of emails? Did we get this photo shoot? Check, check, check. And just checking those boxes worked. Mm-hmm. And th not that there was zero strategy to it, but to a degree, a lot of the strategy was checking those boxes. And so now let's look at 2024. And we've been, as we've been planning for our upcoming intensive, which uh, the Manifest Retail Academy in February, we've been digging into this in like our one-on-one -on -one conversations, but you've been sharing some gold with me privately. So let's chat about it. What do you see as like that strategic thing that does need to shift? Like, what would it be as we look at 2024? And if I'm wanting to grow and I, it's no, no longer about checking the boxes, I don't think you're going to say, well, don't post on Instagram. Don't send right. emails. How would you describe that strategy for 2024? Yeah. So, okay. While you're talking, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, how can I describe this to where it makes perfect sense to anybody listening. And if I, when I look back at my career, I've realized that there's been a lot of different times I've hit this 
hypothetical glass ceiling, right? And so the first step for any entrepreneur, I think no matter where you are in this journey of retail, is you have to be very self-aware of like, what is the next glass ceiling that you're going to encounter? Like looking at your business and saying, okay, what's going to be the glass ceiling I'm going to come come to? And so um, if you're just not, if you don't even know what boxes to check, like you're so in the beginning and you're like, I don't even know what boxes I need to be checking. Like you don't need to jump to this strategy right out the gate because you got to you have to start with checking the boxes. The boxes aren't going away. However, if you're the entrepreneur, no matter where you are, starting new, fresh, seasoned, you have to realize that in order to get to that place in your business where you have the where you're achieving your true entrepreneur dreams, like financial freedom, work hour flexibility, um, whatever that, whatever your why is, whatever's motivating you, just checking the boxes will not, will not be enough to get you to, through the glass ceiling to the next level. It's not going to be. And so you have to be an incredible reverse engineer. You've got to be able to uncover like what the problems are to figure out the solution on how to solve it. And so for me, we were checking the boxes. And so I was struggling with trying to figure out, okay, well, what's the issue? So the strategy that I put in place to give you imagery that would make a lot of sense is I was like, okay, if we have all these different components of, an, of a retail business, they all work together like strings intertwined. So you have the center point where there's the knot. And then out of that knot, you have operations, you have marketing, you have finances you have all you have buying you have all these different things and in order to grow you've got to have like equal tension on all the points you got to know what their tension spot how they can pull on the center point but if any one area is really struggling it's going to put more tension on other spots so i needed something to figure out how can i identify where everything is equally distributed Like, how can I be able to spot what's weighing another area of the business down? And for us, that's where we created the seasonal structure theory. Like, we needed a strategy, and we will talk about the seasonal structure theory in the Manifest Retail Academy, because this has been, like, the pivotal thing for me to be able to really kind of have, like, that big picture view, like, how's the business operating? What's the theory that's going to allow me to, like, look ahead look in real time and look in the future because that's what I was missing when I was trying to work off these launches is I needed a strategy that allowed me to really figure out how the different areas of the business were operating. And so the seasonal structure theory really is that. And inside the theory, there's there's diff- these different components and it's a roadmap that really gives you the ability to kind of spotlight like, oh, we're actually doing really well on our social media engagement. It's the fact that our inventory is under stock Therefore, our sales are not meeting the demand that the company needs. And so that's kind of how we've been able to really leverage growing. And it's given me the clarity that I've needed to be able to spot the areas of the business that really needs a little extra nurturing. So going into 2024, I think the thing that's going to make the difference is, number one, we should have expectations of a normal growth year. like. Trying not to put too much pressure on ourselves of having these massive overnight successes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Block that out on Instagram because you're going to see people sharing their overnight success. I want you to tell yourself that that is an anomaly. And it honestly, like keeping up with that kind of growth is really challenging and difficult. Let's focus on 4% over last year, 5% over last year. And let's fine tune the areas of the business that really need our help and be slow, methodical, and strategic about how we nurture those areas. And then when you do that, you start to build this compounding effect of a system that is going to operate seamlessly on its own. But then it's going to have like these red alarms that kind of are going off. It's like, hey, Your inventory is really an issue right now. You need to nurture this. You need to focus on this. Mm -hmm. And I think that gives a little clarity um, for the business owner. It allows them to kind of know, 
It eliminates some of the chaos of feeling like you have to do all of it all at once. And kind of let you know, like, what can I work on right now that's going to move the needle? I love that. And, and seasonal structure theory is probably, like, I remember at the workshop last September, that was like the huge aha for so many. And so when we can dig into a little bit of like, almost like the intro version of what it is. And, but, and the thing that's important is it's like, it takes so much work before the work, like digging mm -hmm. into your brand and customer. But here's my favorite thing about it is that it really moves a lot of the focus away from you as the owner wow. and as your brand. And it puts the focus on your customer. And it really is centering your operations, your marketing, your site, all these pieces actually move to be all around them. And so what, what, we, what we've done is we've we created this system, you know, where we start at the seasons. And we don't mean like fall, winter, spring, summer, although that may be a part of it. It's like the seasons in your customer's life. Yeah, in their head. Where, like what yeah, are they? Like, yeah, like if you have young kids, for example, May, in and of itself, May is a season. May, it, for, if you haven't gone through it yet, it's called may -cember, And mm -hmm. you have like kids parties are every other week. You have like the end of school year stuff. You have sports stuff. It's the most crazy month. And for a young mom, May is its own season. And then within a season, you have these like major events and minor events. And so major events uh, is the end of school year party. That's for the grownups. And yeah. And then within that, you have these moments. And that moment is how if that woman walks into that party wearing this dress, how does she feel? And we can start to showcase what that looks like. And so what we do is like we start digging into the brand and the customer and what that relationship looks like. And then we can unfold it step by step where at the end, you literally could look ahead. It's wild when I walk people through it. Because you can even like, if you're trying to shortcut it, you can take this to chat GPT. Mm -hmm. I did this with a, a client last week and like a group call where we created their entire January content in like 15 minutes. It's fascinating. But it all rooted in having these things in place. And so, I mean, that that probably is my favorite thing because it. I've been joking that it, you know, for most like the UPS guy is the marketing strategist for most retailers. Oh my gosh. That's that, like that's like incredible because it's so true. Yeah, does that hit close to home? And what I mean yeah. by this is the UPS guy is a marketing strategist and he doesn't know it because your marketing strategy is built around whatever box the UPS guy dropped off. And then what do you do? Okay, so you got a cute dress. So what do you do? You take a picture of this cute dress and then you're going to post it and oh my gosh look we got this dress we're obsessed and you send an email around your new dresses and then you update your site and you're like dress to impress shop now and you update it all around this dress what's the problem if that dress doesn't sell then what mm -hmm. do you post it again like the dress only goes to here but if we can center it around the things our customers thinking about it, the way our customers are thinking, we have a marketing context here, another one here, another one here, another one here. The, the items that we have just like fill in the story. Right. And it's, it's about one thing that I said over and over again at the workshop that people, it seemed to land so well with so many of our uh, clients sitting in the audience, attendees is it's not about the products, it's about the brand. And you have to shift your mindset right now. You have to tell yourself, my products are not the make or break in my business. It's my strategy around my brand. That's what's going to grow retail business in 2024. And so we have to operate. We actually have to stop operating out of chaos and out of a react reactionary mindset to being extremely proactive and strategic in everything that we do. Um, going back to the weight loss example, it's fascinating how much entrepreneurship can be relate to a weight loss journey, but there's a reason that weight loss and strength coaches want you to do progressive overload 
meaning you do the same workouts in the same routine, but you're slowly increasing your weight to put more pressure on that muscle building. It's the same thing that you're going to have to do in your business. You're going to have to create the strategy, create the programming, create the rhythm, the routine, and stick to it, and then start to put more pressure on those systems and on those processes so you can watch the performance and the output increase. Just like like bodybuilding, you know, that's how they build muscle. You're doing the same movement over and over again in the same reps, and then you're slowly adding weight because you're trying to see the pressure that the muscle can handle. Same thing in a business. The only way you're going to increase those sales is you're going to have to do the same thing over and over again. This is not checking the boxes. This has intentionality behind it and put pressure on it. Put pressure on your site, A-B test it to see like what your conversion rate can be. But don't change anything else, right? Because you're trying to make incremental increases. And once you uncover that, then address another area. And that's what the seasonal structure theory does is it gives you clarity in the chaos. It gives you a system in the day-to-day tasks. Um, And so to me, that slow and steady growth, that progressive overload, that's what creates a slow, sustainable build over time that allows your retail business to truly thrive despite the massive fluctuations that may be happening in the economy, in our circumstances, it creates strong foundations that allow your business to continue to thrive and be successful. And and that's what we're after. You know, um, don't chase those momentary, massive Mm -hmm. launches. Because you know what happened when I had those massive launches? They were massive. And then the next day, my sales were terrible because I didn't have the inventory to support it. Yeah. It's wild. You know? And so I've gotten to where I'm like, slow and steady wins the race. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So if you're trying to like bust out the sprint and then you're having burnout, like meet us in class. Okay. Because we've got some really good stuff to teach you. Yeah. <laughs> I've walked through it all. I mean, I know you have too. Like, I've walked through burnout. I've walked through chaos. I've walked through, like, I've had, like, one time in 2020, we had a launch that did $90,000 in four hours. Like, it was outrageous. We have not done that again. Um, I've known what it's like to have plenty, and I've known what it's like to have nothing. Like, I've, you know... And going through those highs and lows is ultimately what has led me to the place where I am today. And um, I would say, honestly, like going in 2024, I have never been so excited about the next year in business. I, I, I'm telling you the truth. Like, I have never been so excited because I feel like I finally have the control that I've been looking for for a really long time instead of just being like, And it's going to be an election year. Like historically, election years are not good for businesses, right? Let's let's just let's just like address the elephant in the room. But I am really excited because I feel like I'm like, so what? Bring it on. Like I've got a plan. Like I'm not scared. And I feel really good. Yeah. No, I think gosh, retail is so much fun right now. Oh god. Yeah. What I love is I can tell that you're having fun. It doesn't mean it's not challenging. I mean, I I know because I get to see behind the scenes like there's plenty of challenging things, but it's fun. Um, and so, you know, to wrap us up, I, you know, do want to invite you, not Tara, but those listening. Um, Tara and I host this really cool. We used to call it Manifest Intensive. We're, you know, we're relaunching it as the Manifest Retail Academy because so much of it has changed because retail has changed. And yeah. it's a five day intensive, technically mornings. It's not like literally all day, um, but where we dive into these core pieces. So first we want to dig into your customer and your brand and what that connection looks like and identifying these core seasons, events, moments, and really learning like how that applies everywhere. And then we deep dive into, okay, what does this look like in our site? What does this look like in our email? What does this look like on social and in paid ads? And what does this look like in our operations? And how do we piece these things together to create like an actual plan, an actual strategy to be able to grow? And so if that is you, 
and you're like, oh my gosh, like, absolutely, I need that. And I want to learn from someone in the trenches. Join us. Um, and so we'll put the link in the notes, but you can, you can check it out at manifestignite.com slash academy. Again, that's manifestignite.com slash academy. Uh, it's February 5th through the 9th. And so honestly, is, you need to be there. You need to be there because I'm telling you, like, like you're, you're hearing it here. Like 2024 is, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. And what's different about it is it's honestly similar to 2023 in a lot of ways. So the, it's different because it's going to force you. It's going to force you to change. And if you're ready to change, if you're like, you know what? I am tired of living in this place of uncertainty. And I'm tired of like fe feeling like I can't do the things I want to do in my business. Then embrace the change that the circumstances are creating. And let's, let's start off 2024 with a plan. Um, let's start off 2024 with some clarity in our business. And, and that's what I love so much about this particular course that we're calling the Repel Academy is because it is intense in the sense that it's a lot of content in a short amount of time, but it is so comprehensive in giving retailers what they need to really be like, I can do this. I have the knowledge and the wisdom now, like I'm armed and ready to go. And um, I just, I know that you and I are the teachers and educators in this, but I want to shout it from the rooftop because seeing people in a place of struggle, knowing that you like have part of the answer to help them get out of that place. It's so hard because you just want to be like, take the class because it's so good, you know, <laughs> and you just can't help it. And so I want to encourage all of you who are listening, like invest in yourself, invest in your business this year, because this one class, I believe in the power that it has, and it can really change the path for you in this next year. And I just I want it for so many of you so bad because I understand the pressure of trying to grow a business and Josh does too. And that's why we do this. You guys are yeah. the heart and soul behind what we do. And um, yeah. I just really think it has a lot of great value. Yeah. I mean, it's exciting because it makes me think of the conversation we had with um, Meredith from MJ, MJ Makeup Bags. And uh, if I said that wrong and Meredith, you're Makeup listening, junkie. I apologize. Makeup Junkie. That's right. Um, and, but they, like, she came, she came, she learned these pieces and she said, she was like, I locked myself in a room for two days and I re-engineered my entire business. And literally the next week she saw this massive influx of sales because the strategy changed or, you know, my friend, Emily, who has this incredible, like really niche boutique, like they go after like a cool niche in the market. And now they're doing like multi-million a year. And she's like, yeah, everything changed when I went through this and I implemented this plan. And God, I don't even know how we have so many stories that are just like that. Cause it, it really is this idea of like what you focus on grows, right? Focus on anything. It will grow. But the problem is a lot of us don't really focus on anything. We're busy. We're doing a ton of things, but we're not really focused on any one area enough to see it gain traction. So that's what our hope for, for you is. Um, but again, you can join us at manifestignite.com slash academy. I hope this episode was encouraging for you. Tara, thanks for being here. Yeah, it's honestly, it's an honor. I'm really thankful you asked me to. And this is like fun. This is fun for me. Like this, I enjoy this so much. Yeah. All right. Well, I will see you next week. And again, thanks for listening to the Retail Initiative podcast. Um, big request is if you could leave a review, subscribe, all that good stuff. That's what helps me uh, in connecting with other retailers and hopefully being able to encourage them in their growth. So thanks for listening and I'll see you next week.